Hi guys, welcome back. You're here with Jen, the Taxidermy Witch, and um, I want to talk, do a little series on how to bless certain things in the moonlight, uh, maybe what you could use them for, and you know the whole process, but if I were to put them all into a video, I feel like it would be definitely 45 minutes long. I might trail off and forget a lot of things, so instead I've taken the time to break them up and do a few videos. Um, so, also, when we talked in the gold and yellow video about things that you can wear in sabots, colors you can wear in sabots, uh, uh, gold was one of them. This is my gold dress. Uh, it's a vintage find that I got in Philadelphia um, a year and a half ago when I went all the way across the country to see a Tool concert with my husband. And it was probably the greatest trip ever. We met so many cool people and had such a good time. The music was so brilliant and it was fantastic. So I wanted to show you that. Um, that would be a great thing to wear in the moonlight. It's what I wear on Sabbaths um, in the moonlight and so I wanted to bring that out and show it to you. Uh, I'm going to tip you down and then show you what's on the table here. So the first thing that we'll do in the little moon series is <clears throat> sand and salt. So you can go get sand from your local beach. That would be absolutely lovely. But I do have to say this. It takes a while to dry. Um, sometimes it can be quite clumpy. So if you have to use something quickly, you can use what I'm going to show you here. And it's uh, sand that you can buy in all different kinds of colors. But I've just decided to, to get the most natural looking one, which was just kind of a pearly white. <clears throat> and it's really got some beautiful crystal flecks in there as well. Um, and then some little tiny black flecks. So it, it's a really nice sand. I like it. You don't have to, to dry it. So, but if you're able to forage and you can go ask the earth, you know, um, go to the beach, your local anywhere, you know, and, and it's not going to look as brilliant as this when it comes from your beach. It's going to look like a mix between this and mud and maybe kind of dirt. So it, I find it quite hard to dry sometimes. So I just wanted to show you without banging into too many things here, um, how I would bless this sand that I got from the craft store in the full moonlight. Now you could certainly just put it just like this and put it in your window. And, and I kind of have like a nice amethyst chunk that that stays on top of this. And then I write on top with a little uh, label that peels off super easy, um, full moon blessed and when, what full moons it was out in. This one was out in May, June, and July of 2018. And then on a very special day to me, which is June 7th of 2018. So <clears throat> that was a quadruple whammy. Um, and that is gonna be what I'm going to do the demo with. Uh, but you would get it from the store, you would unpackage it, you would sage the area, do a cleanse of that, and then, personally, what I do is I would have the bag in my hand and say a little prayer over the bag, kind of bless that, or keep the bag on my altar for as many days as I could before I got it into the full moonlight. However, you could, the full moon will bless something entirely. And it doesn't even have to be shining directly on it. That's a big deal too, you guys. Remember, if you're thinking about a sunburn, the sun rays don't discriminate. Well, the moon rays don't either. The moon doesn't have to directly be on it. It can just be out in that moonlight or full moonlight. The full moonlight is going to be a lot more powerful. And we can talk about that in a a different video, but I want to get through this kind of quickly. So I think what I have in this big, the biggest of the mason jars is two bags of sand, which maybe costs like 12 or 15 dollars, I'm guessing. So as I'm pouring this out, I'm really putting my f intention into it first of all. I'm going to start thinking about what I want to use this for. And what I always use my full moon sands for mostly, and I love touching it, it puts your intention in it more, is I use them for protection sand around my whole house, okay? So let's, let's draw some pictures in the sand, that'll be fun. Here's my house, okay? And then I literally take the sand that I'm going to, to make 
for my protection sand. This is just I'm blessing it before I make the protection sand. And I'm going to take the sand and I'm going to go around the whole entire perimeter of my house from door to door and my yard as well, around my garden, my favorite tree, all of it. So, yeah, it's really sticky on your hands. Makes for a really nice fey offering since they like this um, sparkly. And I love to put this skull that I have here right into the sand, okay? For the sake of the video, I'm just going to use this other horn. But I would lay it out here like this on my roof in the moonlight and all the rest of it would just be kind of down here with the candle and everything else I'll show you. So <clears throat> I don't want to get sand on my kangaroo skin. I love that kangaroo. It's one of my coolest pieces since it's not from this continent. Uh, while I have them out, I just like to say these these pearls um, were an amazing one of my favorite gifts from my husband um, on Christmas, which is such a cool time for me historically, and it brings such love in my heart. And now we know about Yule and Sabbath, so it's double special. And um, but pearls are a great thing to wear in the moonlight, and these are raw pearls, so they're not like perfectly finished. Which I feel like when I wear them, they're like so. Betty Rubble <laughs> from the Flintstones. It's great. But pearls are a great stone to have in the moonlight and moonstone as well, which when we do the next video that's coming over with this stuff over here on how to make full moon blessed water, how to make uh, full moon elixirs, how to make elixirs with stones. So excited. That's coming next. But um, so, you know, you could wear your pearls in the moonlight while you're blessing your sand. Um, or your salts and these are my salts one is just a normal table salt and then this is full moon blessed crushed sea salt now you would do these the same way if you wanted to do a protection salt to me I feel like protection sand a sand is a dirt like an earth element so it's gonna stay in my dirt longer whereas I feel like these salts will wash away and also salt will kill your plants so you know, outside the perimeter of your home, that's okay if you don't have a lot of plants, but if you do, you know, my husband just let me know, he's like, babe, no more salt in the, you know, you could do sugar, you could do, and that's another thing, do sugar if you've not got sand or if you can't find it in time. You can borrow that from a neighbor even. So much more intention would go into it. So getting your sand out, and this is my Atame, or Atame, and it's a vintage piece. I've shown it in a, the blue video, I believe. And uh, what your atome is, is in, you know how um, regular kitchen knives, they have one sharp side and one dull side. Well, an atome doesn't. They're, they're, both, um, they're both sharp. But actually, for a magical tool, neither side is sharp. You can't really cut yourself. It's more like a letter opener. But that is just the symbology of having a blade on either side that is sharp or cutting. Okay, and so then I just go in here and I make my personal symbol. And now I'll hold my intention over that. And I would do it much longer than the video, but I'm just going to do it a bit here. So I like to put my symbol all over everything. So if you see me doing that, it's just my symbol, okay? And <clears throat> your symbol may come to you when you're in meditation and you keep seeing something. Or you can ask your spirit guides, show me what my symbol is and they'll show you, you know? It might take time, be patient, but they will. <clears throat> so uh, let's say I was going to put the skull in, but for the purpose of this being a smaller space, <clears throat> I'm just going to put this horn in, okay? And this is a deer antler. <clears throat> and selenite is so oftenly used because it's a stone that never needs to be cleansed. Uh, I see it a lot uh, paired up with moon blessings. So you can just kind of set that right in there. And it's kind of nice to put it between the horn and then the candle that we're going to do up next. <clears throat> and this is some fresh mugwort that I've just picked from my garden. Now if you pick it in the moonlight so powerful. 
I, I didn't think to pick mine last night, but when you pick things in the moonlight, or let me say this super quickly, and I'm sorry that I have to jot. <clears throat> Where did you go? I have a book, and it's, um, I can't think of exactly where it is right now, but it's, uh, you can look up, you can look up when to do things, like marigolds you need to cut at the uh, hottest part of this, you know, this day in August, or mugwort, for it to be its most magical, you can pick it when and, and how, and so I just love that book, and as soon as I am sure by the end of the video I will know where to find it, I hope. I like to do things in threes, okay? So I'm just going to cut this mugwort into three. And you place it where you feel it needs to be. And um, right now I feel like that's where it needs to be. <clears throat> so I also really like to keep amethyst with my things that I put in the moonlight. So I'm going to put that there. Now in Wicca and a lot of different practices of witchcraft, there's a lined up rhyme or reason, and I think that's more with Wicca. Um, I love learning about Wicca, but I know how to do witchcraft because I'm using my intuition and then knowledge, but it's no perfect setup. And for me, um, this is the perfect setup in my head and my heart. So, and, and that's the thing with magic, you're gonna learn forever. You're still going to be learning. And, you, you know, 30 years from now, if you learned every single day, you're still going to be learning. Such a beautiful thing. Because we'll never get bored. So, from your altar candle, and this is important to me, from your altar candle, light a candle that holds some kind of color magic to you. And check out some of my other videos if you haven't seen my color magic series, because I go through all the colors, and I've done all of them so far except for black, white, and brown. And those are coming. I just, I, I got, um, they take a lot of energy to get those color videos out for some reason, so there's more to come. But so far I've done red, pink, orange, yellow, green, silver, gold, blue, purple. And yeah, we go over, so you can choose your own candle, but I've chosen gold because I want to tune with the god. And again, when we talked about my gold dress, that's what I'm working with there. And I'm just going to place this gold candle <clears throat> deep in that sand so that I know that it's going to stay. <clears throat> and this little piece of mugwort that has fallen to the side, I've just decided to kind of like hold over the flame. Kind of charge some energy into that. and get it away from my fan so that hopefully it'll get going. And now you would just put this out in your full moonlight. That went out. Altar candle in, there we go. And it wasn't meant to be gold, it was meant to be red, right? That's just how it works sometimes. And I feel good about that. I don't feel bad about that at all. Um, sometimes these candles that you thrift, they're not super reliable, you know? They're not always gonna be great even after you cleanse them. So it wasn't meant to be. The red really looks pretty, you guys. I think it, it looks nice. Can you see how nice that looks? I'll stand behind it. Um, and what can I say? After this is all done, we'll make a protection sand. And I'll, I'll try and make that on the video that I do either today or tomorrow. Because we've already got the sand out. I'll probably end up doing it next. But now let's say that wasn't sand. You could do it in the same exact way. <clears throat> I wouldn't do it this way with sugar because I wouldn't want to get sugar on my stones and once the heat gets lower, you know, it could melt. Um, but you could do it with sugar, a candle, mugwort, and some feathers if you didn't, you know, care about the feathers. With salt, I think salt would be just fine. Himalayan sea salt, that would be an amazing bed below that. That would just be a lot of sea salt, you know. Um, so, yeah, just regular table salt or Morton salt, you know, you can do those up in there and then have these ready for a circle casting or a protection salt, uh, a scrub for your shower, for anti-negativity, for cleansing, you know, salt is like the cleanser in magic, right? 
So talk about that. And then, you know, so once that sand is all done, okay, and, and the candles burned all the way down and you want to, if you have loose herbs like this, you want to stay with that candle, you guys, period. Uh, if these loose herbs weren't in there and it was a super secure location, but use your intuition. If you don't feel like you should leave it, don't. If it's me, I sit and I meditate with this for as long as I can, or I'm out in the moonlight doing rituals, spells, other things while I've got all that energy going on, and I'm always within contact with that, and then, like, it's not alone for more than 10 minutes, to be honest, and I feel like that's fine, but go with your intuition, your gut, and what your heart tells you. <clears throat> so, salt, I kind of just keep mine in my room like this. So funny, because one time my husband, I had it on the counter because I was doing um, kitchen uh, magic, and he, I heard him yell and he was like, oh my gosh, who puts salt in the sugar bowl? And he made coffee and he, like, seriously, he eats like six spoons of sugar in each coffee. So I can only imagine what it tasted like. <laughs> oh, dear boy, I love you. Um, so yeah, now let's say some other really cool ingredients to add into Moonlight um, could be, could be snake sheds because they just are so magnified in that and they're such a magical ingredient already they're really good with invisibility or if you you know you don't want you don't want someone to know something was you um but it needs to be done anyway in the best of lights snake sheds would be great for this i put these out in every full moonlight that for like the last seven months you know so these are just super charged and the deal is, is that the clear glass, the moonlight will come in. Excellent. Now remember, I, now remember, I feel like when the sunlight comes in, it takes away that moonlight, you know, because we always have a balance, you know, a yin, a yang, a, a balance of, of the, especially of nature and the energy in the universe. So if you bless it in the direct moonlight like this, which I feel is the best, but if it's cold outside or humid, it can get kind of like sticky. It doesn't matter in your magics, you guys. It's just going to go back out into the dirt anyway for me. <clears throat> but if it's salt or something and you want to use this in like baking, then you're probably going to want to um, not bless it in the direct moonlight because it gets chunky like sugar does if you don't have a cracker. So yes, so in order for you not to let the sunlight from even just the day in the room take the take the moonlight blessing away from it you can put it in a darker bottle like this and even better yet you can I keep a lot of these things in my closet where no sunlight can touch them at all or I'll completely wrap this and my moon waters in a towel so that no light touches it and that's one way that you can really keep the magnification of that at an upper, upper, top-notch level. All right, so now I want to talk about uh, another sand that I do, and it is a black sand that I get, just like I get this one. I get it from the craft store and pay, I think, $2 more per bag, so it might cost like $20 for this whole bin. And on here, you know, I've written what I've got going on, and uh, I'm just going to be honest and tell a small story with this. <clears throat> it says full moon hex, hex blessed, and it was blessed on the on the date of the birthday of the person I'm trying to address in this spell, and it's been dressed on two of those days, so June whatever of last year and June whatever of 2018. So. Basically, there's a person in my life that I love with all my heart, but um, is a family member and won't stop asking my mother for everything she has, whether it's mowing his lawn and he's a very capable person, or um, taking his kids here or there and he lives very far away, and um, or, or money that she just does not have that he could easily obtain. So... I've chosen black sand. This is something I've made just completely on my own. I've never read this anywhere and I've just, I'm sharing it with you guys for the first time. Um, so 
This is probably as, as hexing as I get, but I don't do hexes. What I want to do is to get this person to stop asking my poor mother for money. I want him to figure things out on his own. That's why I put this out in two moonlights of his birthday. Okay, so that's what I've done. And I burn a red and a black candle in here and I let that burn down. And I sit with it the entire time and I pray and I meditate and I put my intention out into the universe that this will stop. Now I'll tell you, within this last year, it's gotten a little bit better, but just this last couple weeks, my husband saw a big roll of $100 bills in my mom's purse when she was on the way over there and I was like, where is it coming from? Because they're both retired and they like really don't have anything. So um, if I ask her or if I address the person and say, grow up, you know, you're you're 45, why are you asking this woman who's 70 some for money? Uh, if I do that, then it just stirs stuff up and it makes everybody upset with me and that's not super fair. So it's interesting when you can approach things in life that for this whole time, you know, maybe your whole time of being alive, you've not known how to deal with in the good way, the bad way, the, the nice way, the not nice way, and you've tried everything. Ugh. This, this has been working. This has been working. And it's not hurting anyone. And no one knows that I am the one who's trying to fight this battle for, for my mother, who I just love with all my heart. And she, you know, if she's got 20 bucks, you have 20 bucks. It's, it's, it's her way. So anyway, red candle, black candle uh, is what I do in here. And I write my intention down the side of the candle and I carve that in with my little um, pocket knife that was a gift from my dad. He got it as an award in 1962 from this shit company he worked for. But man, this is awesome. It's made a mother of pearl. It's got his name on there. Um, he used it for so many things. I used it in my childhood. I mean, and then he just gave it to me for a gift two Christmases ago and I started bawling when I opened it. Like, it is my magical tool. It's what I carve all my things and my candles with. So what I mean when I say that is, you come down the edge of this little tiny candle and you write, like it's already happened, you know, whatever your intention is, my dad is well, my dad is not in pain. And you just carve that into the candle. It's not gonna look perfect, but you do need to spell it out in the future tense as it's already happened so that your guides know and you put those candles in there. And what I write on my message is private, and that's fine, but what you would write on your message would just be private to your situation as well. And if you have a message and you want help, I will definitely let me know. We can Skype and I'll tell you how to word it because I'm trying to talk to more of you as family and friends as a two-sided conversation. And um, Teresa, I've really enjoyed talking to you um, on the comments of my videos and I just want to hear from more of you guys so that we can become family. I want to say another thing really quickly about this. Um, this person is strong uh, that I'm fighting here. Their energy is strong. They do meditations, which is wild because they're like not exactly the most peaceful person, but their energy is strong. So. Not that they know that this is what's happening, and if they did know, I don't care. I'm trying to do this the most peaceful way possible, but I have this, which I showed in my Spirited Dolls and Mannequins video. Um, his, I call him Sheen because he looks like Charlie Sheen in Dead Zone. Um, but he has been with me since I was a little girl and was had bad interactions with this person ever since then, and I used to hold on to this for protection. Uh, and so I keep this with me when I'm doing workings like this. Does that make sense? This negative relationship has gone all the way back to childhood for me, like my earliest of roots and thoughts. And I got this doll when I was seven years old and from like, seriously, seven to 14, I've been hanging on to this thing. And then as an adult now, again, doing witchcraft. But uh, you know, this, this is something that has so much energy to me personally and, and uh, really helps a lot. So, you know, he just might hang out here, um, helping me with a blessing, you know, propped up with a rock or something. 
uh, or just just right there, you know. His feet are in the sand, and he's now a part of that for me. Uh, again, you just take your candle, set it in, and then don't leave it for too long, you know. Um, especially now that if it tipped over, it could hit plastic. Okay, so just be smart with it. Um, I think we've talked about everything on the table, so again, once these are done, you just want to put them back into a mason jar uh, that's clear that you could put out in another full moon line and bless, and then in between those blessings, just and, and when you're not using it for your workings, you want to um, seal up the jar, put it in your closet, don't let sunlight touch it, and cover it up. And then there's things that you should, you know, um, bless in the solar eclipse and then keep those covered up and don't let anything touch them because it's got that, that energy into it. So I really enjoyed making this video for you guys. Um, all my love to you and I'm looking forward to making this video next. I'll show you what I'm getting up to. Moon water. So stay tuned for that.